Hello everyone, I'm Argamu Witch, and this is kind of like a Salty Witch meets manga review, which I haven't done one of yet. But since I'm not really going to be reviewing a manga per se, but instead of an artist, I figured it'd kind of work here. So, today's Salty Witch slash manga review is going to be um, Junji Ito in honor of uh, the month of Halloween or spoop month. So my uh, great and wholly unpopular <laughs> opinion is I think he's overrated. All right. <laughs> now that I've gotten everyone mad at me, allow me to explain. So Junji Ito is often... Uh, accredited as being the godfather of Japanese horror or um, just this genius in, in, in horror and people recommended his stuff to me and I'm like, okay, okay, but wait a minute. L l let me try to get down to brass tacks here. Junji Ito isn't a bad artist. His art's really good and it really uh, works well with horror stories. He has a semi-realistic approach to art, and by that I mean he kind of keeps more of realistic proportions instead of the anime proportions. Granted, they still have like really big eyes, but nowhere near as big as most animes or mangas. He tends to work with a lot of inks, a lot of black and whites, and a lot of straight lines that aren't always so straight, which can be a little unnerving. I think where his weakness is is in his stories. And I've read quite a few. I've owned a few of his his books. Um, my first introduction was Gyo, and I'm going to talk about that one in a minute. I've also read a bunch of his short stories that were recommended to me by people. But, um, yeah, so Jinji Ito starts off really strong in his stories. Like, they're really interesting. He has an interesting hook, and I want to read more, and you want to read more, and we all want to read more. And then it gets really creepy, and and unsettling and you get into this this thing where it starts to feel like a horror like a thriller and I I love that part and then he like takes a left turn somewhere and gets really stupid <laughs> it's it's almost a little Stephen King like you build up this like really great villain or bad guy or mystery and then it ends up being something so ridiculous and it just like loses all of that tense feelings that you've had I, I feel he really drops the ball when it comes to some of his stories and how uh longer ones like gyo and uzumaki or the spiral uh, they're, they're a bit better because he, he starts off, the first few chapters are always pretty good, and then it just goes downhill from there. But he has those first few chapters, whereas the short stories are always just kind of ridiculous. It's like he just jumps straight to the ridiculous part of it, and people are like, oh, this is unnerving, this is scary, and I'm like, what? But it's not. It's not scary, it's not unnerving, it's stupid. Like, I don't remember what it's called, but the one with holes where... There's body shape holes and people are drawn to them and they strip down their clothes and then they get sucked in the holes and never seen again. And I'm just like, that's stupid. This isn't scary. It doesn't really seem all that clever. It just seems stupid. What's the point? I don't get why he's so revered. Um, let, let me, let me, um... Let's jump into, uh, an actual manga. Like, I know Gyo better than the others because... Gyo is the, my first introduction to Jinji Ito, um, but like I said, I do have some of his other works. I do have Spiral, I have, what is it, uh, No Longer Human, Tomie, and, and stuff like that, but Gyo was the first one that I really, I really recognized as his, and I've read more than once. Um, and if you guys don't know which one that is, it's the one that has, dare I say, infamous shark. <laughs> Um, so the idea is that one day these fish and the sharks and, and, and sea life start coming on land. They have like these mechanical parts and there's like these tubes and stuff sticking all up in them and they start attacking people and, uh, they release the spore or gas into the air that then causes humans to start being 
exploded and turn into almost zombie-like things, and then mechanical parts attached to them, and they become basically the, the fuel to power these mechanical parts. The, the, the beginning is weird. Like, the fish coming out of the sea, that's kind of interesting. Why is this happening? Why are these tubes in there? Why are there these mechanical parts? That's interesting. That's really interesting. Even with the goofiness of the fucking shark, like, there were still some tense moments of them trying to outrun a goddamn shark. Like, the premise itself is a little ridiculous. But overall... And then when you see the bodies, the bodies, oh, I remember them so well. It, it was one of those things that they're, they're bloated, just slimy looking bodies and they're like covered in pustules and, ah, oh, it, it was really unnerving and, and I loved it. Like I love every minute of it. It reminds me a lot of canned chicken. <laughs> That's what I compared their bodies to being like canned chicken. Uh, and the idea that even though it was kind of ridiculous that the gases that come from their bodies power the machines, basically burps and farts. Um, and besides that, it was a survival uh, escape sort of story. They're trying to get out of this area, try to survive, live on, not be infected by whatever friends are falling and dying around them and for the most part the story was going fairly well they're they're slowly progressing and then there's the circus chapter where they end up at a circus and a guy has trained them to do circus tricks and that's when i'm like oh well now all the tension is gone all the all this like fear for them and hope that they'll escape because this has just become ridiculous why are they at this? It was like the worst part of the whole thing. Like, what? Why would you add this in there? It, it pulls away from the horror and thriller aspects you had going on here. He, but he always does that. He he did the same thing in like Uzumaki. There was like this interesting thing. There's suddenly spirals everywhere, and people are acting weird around the spirals. And then like, and then a guy keeps creating spirals until his body turns into a spiral. But the thing that I had a problem with. Uh, spiral was or Uzumaki they never tried to to escape it they did briefly and they couldn't but then they just kind of like were like no we're good we're here this is life now and they never really tried to run away there was no escape from it they just accepted this horror situation which didn't make sense to me like this why wouldn't you try to get away if if this these spirals are are strange things that are happening and it's, it's leading to people dying and, and shit happening like that. Why not leave? That was the one of the things that really got to me. They never really tried to like escape this. And then it got sillier and sillier. And I was like, this is just getting ridiculous. There was at one point, I think it was in volume two, where they're in the hospital. Zombie mothers and, and weird mushroom babies. Like It started to get a bit more interesting again. It started to feel more horror again. And then it immediately went back to the goof and the stupid and all of his works are like this it doesn't matter which one it is like he always reverts back to this goofiness and then it has like this ending that is just like a bleak ending and it's just like oh well this is life now which always feels like a cop-out i would rather have like a tragic ending or a happy ending or even just a whatever ending but just uh them like looking on to their life being like this is what we gotta live with now it just feels feels like when someone tries to leave a movie open ended so they can have a sequel i mean i know that's not what he's doing that's just how he ends his stuff but i with, with gyo he ends it with them just sitting on a hill watching the thing go by and he's like they're like well i guess this is life now we're one of the few survivors womp womp it just it it didn't feel like a good closure to the story same with uzumaki uh same with most of the ones i've read of his uh so he has like this really campiness that he throws in there and i don't know if he's trying to do campy but it comes off campy as shit and i think that's where my issue is and this is what makes me salty with jinji ito is that it's it starts off good it starts off interesting and then it just goes like downhill from there and i'm like you had a good thing, man! You had a good thing! And then this! And then this! Ah! 
I mean, granted, it there's still interesting stories sometimes, and he's very clever and creative. And I do like his artwork. It is pretty unsettling at times. He likes to really emphasize eyes and and body horror. And and I'm okay with that. Like I I like look, I like horror uh manga. Well, actually I like horror comics. I'm not really too big into horror manga because they don't seem to deliver. They get close, but they never deliver. Hmm. But I that would be a topic for like some other day. But the artwork for it does lend well to it. And, and if it, anyone else was drawing it, like it probably wouldn't even be as creepy as his stuff currently is. Anyways, anyways, I know people praise Junji Ito. I know they love Junji Ito. And, you know, he's created some interesting works. And for that, I praise him. But as far as him being like a great storyteller or just, um,. I don't know. He gets he gets a little bit more credit than I think he deserves because man, his stuff. He need, it's like almost there. He needs to just push it a little further and don't go campy. Don't go campy. You ruin a horror when you go campy. Don't make your fucking killer clown a giant spider. That's fucking stupid. Don't waste our fucking time on this shit. Uh, anyways, I know this was a much shorter episode of Salty Witch, um, but again, I just wanted to kind of touch on this because it's one of those things that, uh, Jinji Ito gets a lot of fucking praise, and I'm like, yo, I get it, but maybe, you know, maybe he's not really worthy of that much praise. I think he's overhyped. Overhyped, definitely. Like, he deserves some praise, but he's definitely way overhyped. Uh... That being said, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Salty Witch. I think it was Salty Witch. Um, yeah, if you like this episode or if uh, you didn't like this episode, you know, you, you let me know down below. You know, what's your opinion on Junji Ito? What's your favorite Junji Ito work? Maybe there's one I just missed that's really fucking good. You know, let me know down below. Also, um, please give this uh, video a like and share it if, if you want. It really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe, man. Help me get up to to, to all the, the big numbers. <laughs> oh, I don't actually care. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much. I love you and I'll see you next time on Salty Bitch. Bye! Happy Halloween!